four, three, two, one. Engine full power. Well, here's a here's an interesting question. What was the first space activity you ever did, or how did you like get into space community? So I don't know. I've always been interested in space, but I think the main like breaking point for me, the breakthrough was in grade six with our our space unit. Um, so we had to make a model of uh, one of the planets in the solar system, and we had to research about it and have a basically had a poster fair about it. And I think that was the the point for me. And then in grade nine, we had to research a job that we wanted to do uh, in our health class. Um, and we looked on the ALIS website, where you can look at different jobs and expected salaries. And, you know, I was just looking for something interesting, you know, not the highest paying job, but also, you know, something decent. And then I stumbled across aerospace engineering in grade nine. And I was like, this is cool. This is what I want to do with my life. So you... You've known since middle school. Since grade nine, wow. yeah. Um, so that's what motivated me through high school. That got me, got me all the way through. Uh, but yeah, that was the the first thing for me. Would you believe me if I said that I did not want to be an engineer? I would not believe that. Um, Which is like, you I'm should like, elaborate on that. I'm that's... like ten, tw like twenty four seven engineering now. Oh, hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do astrophysics. Oh, really? And so what was? What what changed your mind to do engineering? I didn't get into astrophysics. Oh, I, so Eng was your second choice. Yeah. So okay. Or it was like the sixth. So wow. it was like astrophysics U of A. Okay. Uh, general sciences U of A, um, astrophysics McEwen, a uh, couple of other fillers, and then engineering at Red Deer. Okay. And I didn't apply myself enough during high school. Oh. And so it's one week before classes start for engineering and I get a call and say, hey, you've been accepted to Red RDC. Oh, you started, I didn't know you started at RDC. Yeah, I did my oh. first year at RDC. Okay. And so at that point I was just like, I was working as a surveyor. I wasn't doing a lot. Yeah. And my mom was like, okay, you're going. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm going. After first year, I was just hooked. Yeah? I. I had the uh, anti first year experience. Like that's awesome. I was. You know that's good. You don't hear about that often. I, it's usually like first year was hell. Exactly. No, Red Deer first year was like an actual like joy. That's awesome. And so it was a man mandatory transfer. Yeah, to U of A. I, so are you from Red Deer? Nope. Where are you from? Middle of nowhere. <laughs> Middle of nowhere. Okay. And I just applied to Red Deer because I needed a backup school. Okay. I didn't want to actually like, I don't know. I was really hesitant about engineering. Like everyone said engineering when I was like growing up and I was like, no, no, no I don't want to build anything. And then <laughs> I'm like, astrophysics, that's where it's at. Yeah. I like stars. And okay. then uh, dominoes kind of like the stars aligned, the dominoes fell Literally in place. Literally stars aligned. <laughs> now here I am about to graduate in mechanical engineering. That's crazy. Studying aerospace. Yeah. So it sounds like you were interested in aerospace from the start though, like with your astrophysics. Yes. So uh, when did that start for you? I had, oh, I must have been like 13, okay. 12, 13. That's pretty young. And, well, this wasn't like like space in general, but I got okay. a telescope. My family oh, got a telescope. Oh, nice. And it was one of those things where like you could look out as an amateur astronomer and you could literally see the rings of Saturn in oh. 8K. It was as good as your resolution could be with the power we had. And yeah, after that, it was like, Always looking up. Looking at the stars. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good jumping off point. I think, uh, you know, looking at stars and looking at the rings of Saturn at 13, I think that's pretty good motivation. Yeah. Which I'm always, I'm always like, very curious about this because, it, like, space is such a cool um, industry to pursue. It really or is. Not even pursue, just to learn about. Well, yeah. But it's something that seems so unaccessible in a way. A hundred percent. You know, I've been talking to people that, you know, I went to high school with and they're like, I didn't even know that was possible. You can't do that in Alberta. Yeah. It's like, no, just, just get involved with things at the university. Like that's all you got to do. Not even university, but like SEDS. Well, yeah, well that's even university level. Though, okay. Right. Fair like enough. that's like, but that's, that's, you, you joined that in high school. I said. did. Yeah. I joined that in grade 10. Yeah. So SEDS students for the exploration and development of space. Um, they're, you know, worldwide, 
and they uh, they run projects and events for Canadian post secondary students. I'm not sure how much you know about them, but I know you're involved with them. I am, and yes. I know <laughs> kind of the breakdown of their projects, but I don't actually know past projects that they've done. So, you know, they run. Well, there's technically four main projects that they run. Yeah. Uh, first one is CanRGX, and we can go super in debt with that. Uh, you love your reduced gravity Yes, experiments. reduced gravity experiments is my uh, bread and butter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we also have CanSBX, which is a uh, Canadian stratospheric balloon experiment where uh, post-secondary students get to launch stratospheric balloons into the stratosphere. So about 30,000 meters up, uh, and then the balloon pops, and you can recover your payload. Uh, and get all sorts of scientific data. Uh, one of the examples is, you know, seeing how, um, you know, electrons and particles in the uh, stratosphere affect hard drives and, uh, you know, capabilities of that. So that's what one of the teams did last year, um, and they're redoing their project this year to um, look at that again in a different aspect. Um, there's also CAN ARX, which is a new mission, um, CAN in a Canadian Analog Research Experiment. So, so yeah, what what is analog research? Analog entail? research. Um, so you got to simulate Mars and the Moon somehow, right? Like you don't have resources up there. You don't have man-made infrastructure, um, running water. Um, you do. Ha you have like a, a generator or something, but like nothing intense enough to you know live there for an extended period of time. Okay. So analog research is like coming up with solutions to problems that you may face uh, on Mars or the moon. Um, a lot of them are like medical um, solutions or projects. So, you know, remote healthcare, that helps us on Earth too. Um, you know, none of it, um, Arctic regions and, you know, all across the world. Wow, that's like, wow. I, I didn't know that's what that research was about. Like, because it used to be Arctic... Yeah. Research. So yeah, before it was analog research, it was Arctic research. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be in the middle of nowhere, away from you know any civilization, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so for these projects, yeah, kind of like how in depth do they go? So every like, to like elaborate elaborate further, like a first year engineering design project mm -hmm. is very surface level. It is. You don't yeah. go into the actual weeds and analysis of no. what's required to make said product real. Yeah. Is it kind of that level analysis or is it deeper such as what uh, Kenner GX requires with a critical document review? Yeah. Or so design review, um, all projects uh, through SEDS have a preliminary design review, a critical design review, and a final test document package that you have to submit. Um, so, you know, most first engineering courses are writing a proposal and submitting that. That's your coursework for the year. Yeah. Um, so that's just touching the surface of SEDS uh, projects. You have to submit a proposal to get accepted into these programs. Mm -hmm. So you can directly ap apply what you've learned from first year and, uh, you know, write this proposal up. And then, you know, hopefully you get accepted based on your research. But then you actually get to design and build it. Right. Yeah. Which is the stage you're in right now. Yeah. So, you know, for Can RGX, um, Spider Sat, um, an Alberta Sat subsidiary, uh, we're making a gecko adhesive net. I'm sure you know. Um, so. Yeah. I'm a big nanotech guy. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. And when I finally realized you were doing gecko adhesives, I don't know why it like just went over just my clicked. head for nine months. <laughs> when it finally clicked, I was like, wow, that's. <laughs> So cool. Yeah. So, you know, space debris in, in low Earth orbit is a huge problem. There's over, I think, 10 million pieces of space debris, and about 5 million of those are 1 to 10 centimeters in size. So a 3-centimeter piece of debris ripped through the thermal blanket on the Canada Arm 2, um, which is a million-dollar, like, blanket. Like, it costs a lot to fix. Yeah. So, you know, we're like, how do we... You know, like, what could have we done to prevent that from happening? And the ISS doesn't have any capability of navigating around debris 1 to 10 centimeters in size. Not at that speed. Not at that speed. Yeah. It, it, it can't track it. It just, it's not possible. Going over Mach 5 minimum? Exactly. Yeah. It's like, 
it just it's a bullet. It goes straight through. Yeah. Um, and having a ship designated to go around and catch debris like a butterfly net isn't really feasible. So your solution is really unique, where it's kind of like a array of gecko adhesives. Yeah. That once a shear force is applied, your debris will will catch the debris. It will, yeah. It is oh, so cool. Yeah. Like the microstructure that makes your gecko adhesive. I, I haven't seen the specific mold you're using, but like it's basically they're all kind of similar. We have like these tiny uh, points, that fibers, you yeah, tiny fibers, got fibers, and they got little caps on the top. Yeah, and when they are pushed over under a shear load, they uh, use a van van der Waals force. Van der Waals force, yeah. electron electron interactions. Yeah, and you get a adhesive like effect. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting and. It's dry, like reusable. Yeah. And if you know you get dust or anything on there, you just wipe them down with some soap and water, and good to go. Brand new. Brand new. Oh. See, like I really wish I knew projects like this existed when I was in high school. Oh yeah. Or even like first year engineering. I'm now f in my fifth year of my co-op, and I'm finally feeling like I'm contributing to space projects. Yeah. And it's so interesting, but. I just wish I knew sooner. Well, the problem is they're not advertised enough. Um, SEDS doesn't market them to the extent that, especially in like Western provinces, mm. doesn't get marketed. Um, if you look at the, the demographic of most of these projects, there's a fair amount that come from U of A. Um, there's a few that come from UBC, but most of them are coming from you know U of T, McMaster, York, um, all the universities in Eastern Canada. Right. Which is, they have, a, like their primary, like, members of SEDS are from Ontario. Um, but, you know, I think as my role in projects chair, I want to expand that and, um, you know, bring it all over Canada, not just limit it to, you know, Eastern or Western. I want it to be across Canada. Yeah, it would, uh, I think it, there's a lot of people who have the same mission as you right now. It is yeah. such a fun time to be a part of this community. 100%. Like, there is, I mean, maybe it's more of, like, a rumor, but the idea of opening up kind of a mini spaceport, not for commercial use, but for amateur use in the uh, Alberta area. So, like, you could have amateur teams actually coming together in Alberta and... Which would be crazy. Doing sounding rocket tests. I, that, that's unheard of in Alberta. Yeah. Un, 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 unheard of in Canada. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's Unless you're going to the middle of nowhere in Ontario... There's nowhere yep. you can launch a sounding rocket. No, it's it's just it's not feasible. But to see it, you know, starting to emerge, and you know, it may just be rumors for right now. But it's hush, 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 hush is right. <laughs> uh, oh, that's also another uh, amateur region of space, the space community that I didn't know was so in, like had such a deep technical side was sounding rockets. Yeah, you're pretty heavily involved with sounding rockets, if if I remember. I'm getting more and more involved yeah uh, so i am a part of the u of a rocketry team okay and i'm i'm a mechanical guy okay all right structure structure okay making stuff fit together a i and t a i and t but then i got a chance to go to, to norway right yes. and and doya space sensor or space, 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 space center <laughs> space center and doya space and what i learned there blew my mind what'd you learn so Sounding rockets are meant to be a scientific bridge for atmospheric study be where, between where your low orbit class vehicles go and your high altitude balloons go. Oh, okay. So there's like a 200 kilometer region. That's just not reachable with balloons, balloons. but is below what you would classify as low orbit. Okay. Or maybe like that range is a little big, but it's, there's this large range where they want to do atmospheric studies but right. they don't they didn't have the equipment or technology or th the equipment and technology that existed didn't cover that specific band and that's 200 kilometers that's that might be wrong but well, it's roughly, about, it's roughly yeah. in there and so sounding rockets are rockets designed not to go to space so it's a, it's like a little weird in that aspect. Like you Rockets, hear rocket and you air think quotes. you're going to Mars, yeah. right? Elon Musk, star, Starship, take yep. me to the moon. <laughs> uh, 
but sounding rockets are these, yeah. So they're usually always solid propellant. Yeah. Because you can get to a hundred K elevation easily with one stage of solid. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't say easily. That's a big, <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Like, but you can get to those ranges with one to two stages and you can do amazing kinds of science that you wouldn't believe. So, uh, in Andoya space, I saw this sounding rocket with an upper stage that has what's called a hotel. What's a hotel? So if your fairing, the fairing bay on a rocket yeah. is something that opens up and kind of like blooms like a flower. Yeah. A hotel is something that opens up, but it's classified as a uh, developable mechanism. Okay. So the door is kind of in the curvature of the rocket. Gotcha. And so when the door opens, it's like the shape of the rocket's conserved. Like you can imagine like two cylinders with holes in them, like lining up kind of. Okay. Um, and then you would have a deployable arm, yeah. a boom come out and whatever, like uh, you can be measuring like a DFGM or something like that. Okay. Dual flux gate magnetometer. It wouldn't be exactly that because that's something specific to Alberta Sat, but. Oh, is it? I believe it's. Pretty... I'm. Like, there's other versions, but yes, I, ours I is... DFGM is definitely technical to Alberta Sat, but there is other ways of measuring space weather. I've seen it on other CubeSats. Yeah. And yeah. so you'll have these, like, huge, like, four or five meter long arms, like, extend out. And oh, then that's your, crazy. your nose cone will pop off, and you're, like, basically, like, doing, like, a, um, what would you call it? It's basically, like, normal rockets... When you deliver a payload, payload and the fairing opens, but on a sounding rocket, and then you'll have this like huge mechanism that will be at around apogee for around fifteen minutes. Oh, 15 minutes! It's up there for a long time. Okay, and then whew, goes ballistic and comes back down. <laughs> like um, so you can have it ballistic; it saves weight if you don't need a recovery system. Yeah, but that's, that's yeah, nice. It is like a a world I didn't know existed that is so in depth, and NASA apparently does like a bunch of sounding rocket experiments at Andoya Space. Oh, really? They were there when I was there. Oh, awesome. And they had enough propellant there to flatten the island. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but yeah. They, a lot of propellant there. If you see yeah. the videos of the Vortex mission launch, it is literally like it becomes daytime. <laughs> That's crazy. I'll have to look that up after. That's they Actually, yeah. I think it was a month ago they released the footage from the launch. You got to see it in person? When no. You were there? No. no. No, I, I left too soon. I oh, left a week early. That's too bad. I didn't so, see my own launch. Well, though. how did you get involved with Endoya? Like, how did that go about? Well, through Alberta Sat. Oh, really? And what is Alberta Sat? Well, um, so yeah, I'm being a bit facetious, but uh, it was just an opportunity that was available at our university. Okay. And since I was interested in rockets, I've been a part of the rocketry team. I've been a part of Alberta Sat. I've been trying as hard as I can to learn about this space stuff. There's a lot of it. I applied and I was lucky enough to get picked. It was a, it was quite a, quite a privilege. Yeah. No kidding. That's crazy. Well, I mean, hopefully I'll get to do that in my uh, undergrad experience. Oh, hundred percent. You'll go. Yeah. hundred percent. You'll go. I mean, you better apply. Oh, I will. I applied to the last one and the, the last two. Oh, and I, I took your spot. Well, I'm not, I'm not mad. You deserve it. <laughs> Thank you. And you're so welcome. <laughs> I'll I'll get my chance. Pandeep and I will go. Yeah. Dude, that'd be such a fun trip. That'd be so sick. <laughs> if you go in the fall, it is like it, a literal paradise. I'm hoping so I'm actually going to Florida in September. I just got it confirmed that I'll be going there from Four. September eighteenth to twenty fourth for Project Possum, which is uh basically an astronaut training it's just glorified space camp. <laughs> I like I don't wanna like so it depends on your your, your background. I have a very academic background, mm-hmm. but you know, anyone can apply to it. Like, and it, like, some person off the street, yeah, you can come to space camp. To me, it's it's more than just a glorified space camp. It's you know, I want to be an astronaut. That's my goal. Um, so having these training opportunities would be amazing. So, what does this? I you say glorified space camp, but Project Possum, right? Project Possum. What does that entail, like training-wise, itinerary-wise? Like, how demanding is it to show up to an event like this? So day one is just in classroom training. Um, you know, you learn about mesos- mesosphere and uh, clouds and stuff like that. 
Um, cause that's, that's what it is, is it's a mesosphere research group. Um, okay. so, you know, you pay them to do research. Um, you know, and th they have all these sorts of courses and stuff, but I'm taking astronaut. So AST 101, which mm -hmm. is like fundamentals of astronautics. Um, so I got to do hypoxia training. So starve myself of oxygen and see how I do. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, there's a, um, okay, wait, like, don't move on. I want to know more. <laughs> So, I'm assuming there's some kind of apparatus that lowers the oxygen. Well, percentage. they lower the oxygen percentage in this like sealed room. In a sealed room. Yeah. Wow. So it's simulating losing cabin pressure pretty much in a uh, you know aircraft. So. And you know. do they go until you pass out, or kind of what? Like, what's the the goal? Uh, um, the goal is to see how you perform when you're starved of oxygen. You know, as okay. an astronaut, you may encounter that. As a pilot, you will encounter that. Um, if you encounter any sort of depressurization, mm -hmm. you're going to experience hypoxia. You're starving yourself of oxygen. Yeah. And your brain doesn't operate very well without oxygen. I could imagine that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's why, you know, if you've ever been on an airplane, watch the safety people, and they're like, you know, when the oxygen masks drop down, don't help someone else first. Help yourself first. And that's because, you like, if you help someone else first, you're taking time off yourself before mm -hmm. you go into this, you know, hypoxia state. Um, where your brain isn't functioning right because you you're physically starved of oxygen. You don't have what you need to. So that's why, they, and it's not like be selfish. It's like put this mask on so that you can actually breathe, and then you can help people. Right. Wow. And okay, what else is included in this camp? Um. The so project, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. We go down to, you know, Florida. Uh. At Florida Tech, I'm pretty sure it is. Um. But. You know, we go on a couple field trips, so we got to go fly up in some uh, some jets and sit in the you know back of a two seater, pull some crazy turns. Uh, there's going to be another microgravity flight, so I got to experience microgravity again in an EVA suit. Um, so, what the astronauts wear? Okay, yeah. So I'll be up there floating in uh, microgravity for you know twenty second parabola in a little spacesuit. Have you have you? experienced microgravity yet not yet no august uh you know some early august july 31st to august 4th is the flight campaign for can rgx all right i'm gonna have a lot of questions after that oh you will uh <laughs> you will be happy with all the answers i give you hell yeah <laughs> okay um but yeah this kind of i'm always curious because i've heard some people have told me before that they like want to be an astronaut yeah including that's, you. The, that's the goal but like i don't know why how is Pursuing that career mm -hmm. in aerospace different than uh, engineering, or like, what's the distinction, te like temperament distinction? You think between wanting to build rockets and climb on top of them? Um, that's a really hard question. Yeah. Um, astronaut is a second career, is really what it comes down to. You have to be good at something else before they'll even consider you. You have to prove that you're the best of the best mm -hmm. in your first career to be even considered to be an astronaut. Right. It's it's a second career. Um, it's my end goal, but I want to focus on, like, I want to make the rockets, too. Like, I think that's cool. Wow. I, uh, so I don't actually, like, I don't want to be an astronaut, but I do think I have the temperament of climbing on top of a rocket. It, like, it I did takes a special kind of person. I did ask you this question before. I've been asking everyone this question because I think it's such a good icebreaker. It is a good icebreaker. So I'll just ask you again. Uh, NASA comes to you with a golden ticket. Yeah. One free ride to the ISS, no strings attached. 100%. I take that all day. Okay. Same deal, except it's a trip to Mars. You come back or no? You come back. It's a okay. two-year mission. Take that. Okay. One-way trip to Mars. One-way trip. All day. I take all day. that all day. See, I will die on that red planet. I've I said I, say, I have the exact same answer. And usually a lot of people say no after part one. They say, no, I don't want oh, to go really? to space. Yeah. Wow, I found that surprising. Uh, me too. Like even like a let's say a two month mission, not two month vacation to the yeah, it's, yeah, it's literally a vacation. Yeah, people say no. Wow, that's surprising. Well, like I, since I started asking more people this, like I've been asking a lot of engineers, engineering yeah. students, sorry, this question, and they say no. But when I ask people in Alberta Sat, oh, there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, you never know. At least they'll go to the ISS. Most people say yes to the ISS. Well, that's that's baby steps, you know. You gotta include the moon in those questions, man. Like that's you gotta work your way up. It's a big leap from ISS. I, to ISS Mars. to Mars is huge. 
I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The way I think about it is you're no longer really in our system. Right? Oh, no, you're not. Yeah. yeah, not at all. The moon is still in our system, so like in a little Earth-Moon system. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so wait, so before, before astronaut, you're building rockets. Yeah, that's the goal. All right, wh where are you going to study? I don't know yet. You don't know yet? I don't know. I, I So <sighs> I'm up in the air about it, but I, I've been thinking about uh, RMC, Royal Military College, and, you know, going there um, to do a master's. They don't really have a rocketry program, but, you know, being a pilot in the Air Force it's is a huge useful. leap for, you know, astronauts. Yeah. Okay. Looks like, because I'm thinking somewhere in the States. Somewhere in the States. I've thought about that, too, but where in the States are you thinking? Purdue. Purdue. That's a really solid choice. That is, like, number one. Maybe I'll find some other. I do have some backups. I'll keep them close to my chest for now until yeah. I, I know. But I have to write all the... Well, since I'm out of country, I have to write the TOEFL. What's the, that? Uh, English proficiency test. Okay. Oh, I, I think I, I might, like... I've speak, spoken English. Oh, my God. I've spoken English my entire <laughs> you life. you sure? <laughs> I'm getting that. I've spoken English my entire life, and when I, I, like, I like to take, like, sticky notes yep. and, like, kind of make a collage of, like, a vision board of what I need to do to mm -hmm. get somewhere. Um, when I was like writing English proficiency test, I misspelled English. <laughs> um, so maybe that's like a, an omen about what Yeah, red flag. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's already too late. So all downhill from here. All downhill from here. No, I think, I think you'd do really good in that spot. I Thank know you. Purdue is crazy, but you know, it's definitely doable, especially seeing all the stuff you're doing, right? Like it's, it's crazy. Hey, you don't, you're, you're doing plenty too. I'm doing too much. <laughs> Yeah, you have bags under your eyes. Uh, yeah, I'd be sleepy. I'd be the eepiest sleep. little guy. <laughs> I, I'm just on track to getting my sleep schedule back. Uh, it's not going to happen for me for a very long time, especially coming back from Toronto this weekend. That two-hour time difference is throwing me off a bit. Yeah. But, like, did you do anything? Like, you were there for SEDS. Yeah, I was there for SEDS. Did we had our board of directors meeting. Yeah. Did you do anything, like, I don't know, fun? Fun space related thing. Not space related. I went to the CN Tower and you know oh, yeah, seeing the, see the engineering side of that is pretty cool. Like um seeing all the you know cables in the elevators is like this I, is taking me all the way up to this like what two hundred eighteenth floor, whatever it is. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah. I I could see myself being a structural engineer. Like it's not what I want to do. But something it's like to that extent, right? Like that's like I don't want to just be like I build skyscrapers. Okay, whatever. But building cool towers like that, okay. Like somebody has to make the tower that's going to hold Starship. It, it, that's true. That's true. It could be you. Uh, I'm not a structural guy. I'm no. not that kind of structural guy. You like the moving structures. I like the moving structures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the vehicles. The vehicles are the, you know, I, I think they're more fun. But, you know, that's different than some people may think. And it's just as important, you know, Starship's not going to get off the ground without that, right? Yeah, well, they call it stage zero for a reason. Exactly. It's just as important as one oh, and two. Oh, exactly. Well, if not more important, right? Like, you can't get to stage one or stage two without stage zero. I don't know. The The test launch, there was no stage zero when it was finished. Yeah, that was a little bit of an oversight, hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I swear on my life, I'm going to go witness one of those launches. Oh, we should totally go. Yeah? Yeah, I'm totally down. It's rumored there's going to be another one this month. Yeah, I, oh, really? Okay, I got to get maybe, my passport Maybe not out. May, but like within the next month. Within June? Yeah. Okay, that would be cool. That would, in a heartbeat, I'd go. Oh, 100%. I mean, it would be midterm season for me anyways. Light work. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> that's what I said. And then when I went to Canna Rock. Yeah. And then I was struggling. Uh, that's okay. Taking was... a week off was not easy. Oh, you know what? Like, as much as people say that, you know, marks matter in the space industry, it's 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 not the case anymore. Really? Like, it's, it's important. Yeah. But it's not the end-all, be-all. You don't need a master's anymore to go, you know, participate in space. Like... But if I do want a master's, my grades now do matter. Yes, so third and fourth year grades. I guess you're 300, 400 level classes. I'm in my fifth year. Yeah. All of them matter. All of them matter. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, that's but, how it goes. But like last semester, I was struggling after that week break. Yeah. But I, I can say I made the greatest academic comeback of my life. Uh, you know, you always tell yourself you're going to make these academic comebacks and, you know, 
Just, that I, I said happens. it, and I, I actually did it. Oh, was, you made it. I, I did he it. He did it. I did it. And I was really proud of myself. I'm that proud I, of you. I didn't That's awesome. Blunder my career away. Blunder <laughs> your career away. <laughs> One week in Norway and to blunder your way my entire future. Well, I mean, it's a pretty cool story. And you made the comeback. I did, yeah. So I, it's a happy ending. Good happy ending. Oh, well, I think this has been a good wrap. Yeah, it's been awesome. Well, well uh, I will, uh, what's it called? We will be doing this weekly. I hope everyone's enjoying listening. Yeah, uh, hopefully so we do more fun combo. topics. Yeah. Like, I do want to hear more about being an astronaut. How about we uh, we bring that up next week? Yes, sir. All right. All righty. Uh, peace out. Peace out. See you later, space cadets. Imagine. Just wasn't recording. It stopped.